We'll be talking about Power BI. I am Amrachi Ugabe. I'm a data analyst. I'm also a Power Platform developer because I utilize tools like Power Apps, Power BI, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, and then the Power Pages for building business solutions. I am also the community lead for Data Scientist Network, Port Harcourt. So all the way from Port Harcourt, I came here to have these discussions with us. The thing is, when this conference, the team came up, which is unlocking the power of data, I looked back and um, I observed that the, the charts we see on social media, you know, we talk about building in public and it's also important to build in public so that as you build in public, you take corrections from people, you see what people are doing, they also tell you the things you need to improve on. So over the times, I've seen people just um, basically on bar charts, pie charts, uh, trend lines, and all that. But there are some AI visuals that I don't really find in people's analysis. And it occurred to me that perhaps this could be the opportunity to let people know about the AI visuals we have in Power BI. And also to encourage the beginners because by the time beginners come into the industry or into the data sp uh, space and they begin to hear things like um, building models, algorithms, it can become so overwhelming. And you know, they're always told to, to learn a tool first and when they learn that tool, they should also use it to solve problems before they advance to another tool. So someone can be hearing um, machine learning models and detection models and all that and may be confused. But you can do something like that. If, if it's not even so much, if it's not something so big, but you can do it even with Power BI. You can do language detection on Power BI. You can do, um, yeah, you can even do uh, image cl uh, classification on the Power BI service. But for Power uh, BI desktop, you can do language detection, key phrasing, you can extract key phrases, and then you can also do sentiment analysis. So you don't, by the time you want to perhaps carry out this kind of analysis, you, you shouldn't wait till you've become so proficient in the use of Python and now begin to do, you may get uh, limited, maybe when you want to solve that problem. So that's why I decided to bring to you this topic. Let's talk about the AI visuals in Power BI. This is supposed to be a hands-on, but as we, the time we have, I'll be able to show us some little things so that by the time we go back, we build upon those things. And the data set I also have, is it's public, it's on cargo, it's just a minimalistic thing, so that when you go back, you build on it with whichever analysis you want to carry out. You can always use these visuals to enhance your insights. I hope we understand. So now, uh, who can tell us the difference between e-commerce and retail? E-commerce and retail, they're quite similar, but there's a little difference. Retail, e-commerce, they're the same blood group and genotype. Okay, retail may just be only offline, but e-commerce is both online and offline. You get, so it's, it's just basically almost the same thing, it's just that another set of persons decided to go forward. Yeah, so running through this, we just talk about the industry, we talk about the data sources, the AI visuals, then see the insights we can get from it, and that's just it. So for a retail industry, you would want your customers to be satisfied. And that is why whenever any company maybe bank, you made a transaction, and then you, your money was not credited. In fact, someone will be writing an article on Twitter, 
but you just go under that post and go and tag the bank. What are you trying to do? Because you know that the bank, they're very particular about their reputation. They're very particular about customer satisfaction. You know that by the time you do that, you have called them out and they're going to come to respond. Whether they're using automation to respond though, or is a physical is a agent, a customer service that is responding, no problem. All you know that you have caught their attention. So that is what customer satisfaction is all about brand repetition. That is what retail industry they really want to do. Yeah, they also want to be able to track their their goods, their customers, their services. They just need effective tra uh, tracking so that they know when they have goods in stock, not when they are maybe having under de uh, demand or they are having over demand and supply. At the same time, they want people to be able to assess their goods. When you want to buy something, it's available. They also make sure that the market is uh, efficient, just like I said, to avoid um, too much demand and then to maybe too much supply. They just need to have that balance. So that's the kind of uh, thing they like to do and why they're also in business. They also play around with our choices and bring variety. You may be crazy about a particular uh, product and in the next one month you are hearing that there is another brand, there is another variety and for human beings like us, we, we like to explore. So they are also interested in our choices and then bringing variety of things to us and they also promote local growth, yeah, because they will always employ people and they kind of stabilize price with their competition, uh, competitors. And then innovations and trend, they also evolve. That's why some people that were just uh, basically offline with technology now, they've moved to e-commerce, not only on websites, but also on apps. And then the, you can even get home delivery, no longer walk in. And some, some, some even go as far as making you to pay on, the, uh, on delivery so that at least they are able to, to get to, you don't have an excuse. Anywhere you like, make your order from. As long as we have an effective database and we have an effective tracking system, we would be able to supply to you. I hope we understand. Okay, do you think that uh, these companies could face possible challenges? Is there anyone that is willing to, to think about the challenges they could face? You see? Okay, funding problems. Yes, there could be times you want to scale, scale up, and then you are limited. You need funding. If you've been running an analog business and you want to be digital, you need funding. You also need uh, technology. You also need to understand technology. You need to adapt to it. And you're also concerned, okay, um, the people building this technology for me, how are they going to build it so that my data is, uh, is secured? You know, the cyber security, data privacy, and all that. And you're also concerned about proper inventory and customer expectation. So because of their objectives and their challenges, that is why they need us. They need... a. Uh, data people, not only the scientists, every data prof uh, profession, and in fact, different tech stacks, so that you will be able to solve some of these problems for them. So in the retail industry, there are many use cases of, uh, of data. You can use it for personalized uh, marketing. You can use it for uh, pricing optimization. You may be on your phone, maybe Facebook, and then uh, you see a Jumia advert, and you just checked one shoe, you just shoe that you checked, and you maybe logged out. By the time you log in again, Jumia is bringing bag, and you are looking at the bag. Before you know, subsequently, Jumia keeps bringing uh, fashion wears to you. What are they doing? They've been able to build some models that. Um, has looked at your search history, your browsing history, they've seen your preferences. And because of that, they're able to, to target you. They're able to send some um, particular related, let me use the word related, 
according to your search uh, preferences. So that is why they use data. They use your data, your search history. They use your choices. Even uh, on Facebook, as you're filling information, there are some places they will ask you what you're interested in. I think there is a column for that. And some people will write politics, religion, and all that. So they use all those data about you to know the things that uh, you, you, are, you, you really like. And that's how they keep uh, pushing those things for, to you so that you'll be able to just click and buy. Now, this is what data does for them. They do demand forecasting. Yesterday in this same hall, we learned about the act of uh, forecasting. It, it's helpful for several, several, lots of things. We also know that um, there could be instability, there could be some, um, some issues. So even when we are forecasting, we are so careful about the features that we use in our forecasting models. So customer segmentation, they're able to know, okay, this is a male and this is a female. So this is the kind of thing the person should be buying and this is the kind of thing a male should be buying. They also know if you are married and they may want to know, okay, this person that is married, maybe let me be pushing children, children thing also to the person. So they're able to segment their customers. And all these things are kinds of uh, analysis, kinds of models that even beginners can actually build. Okay, not really models per se, but these are the kind of problems that even beginners or anybody can pick up and begin to work on. So they, they are concerned about uh, fraud detection also. Like I mentioned, their challenges could be they are scared of their data, privacy, security. So that is why they would also want to do some fraud detection and with that, they are able to with that, their fraud detection uh, model that is being built, they're able to know when there is something fishy. So imagine maybe someone has been buying maybe 10, 10 naira, 20, 20 naira, 10, 15, and all of a sudden you are seeing something of a purchase of 1 million naira. You should be able to flag somewhere to, to really check out what's going on here. Is this, um, is this a case of a fraud or it's normal? So these are the kind of things that uh, social media analytics, just as I mentioned, Twitter. Twitter has been a, a big tool that the youths have used for virtually everything. Politics, journalism, tech. In fact, this conference started from just a tweet on Twitter. So you see, social media sentiments, customer churn, and all that. So this sentiment analysis can also be built on Power BI. That is just what I want to explain to us. You can even do what cloud and lots of things on Power BI without having so much knowledge on Python. So that by the time your data set evolves and then your skill set also evolves, you'll be able to, to balance yourself with all these tools and be able to help yourself. The person that spoke to us yesterday on football, I think Mr. Victor that came in from US, he was saying that the, the, the tools he learned first were, I think he said Excel, he said uh, Power BI, he just mentioned three tools, SQL. But by the time he got into the industry, he learned so much. Why? Because it is not so much about the tools. It's about solving problems. So each tool you have in your hands, know the capability of that tool and utilize it. So by the time you learn another tool, you also know the capability. Sometimes you can even do an analysis with a particular tool, run through it, and do with another tool, run through it, and compare and really know, oh, so this is this is it. I got so and so here, and I got just compare. Are there similarities? Are there differences? So this makes you balance in the industry. Now, with what we have, or what I'm going to show us, I, I think this slide will be shared to us, but it's just a simple supermarket data set that we all, I think every one of us should have used that at one point, but the the dates and some other things we are not included because I don't intend to do data modeling, but we'll talk about it. And then there is a data set from 
tag box it's also on cargo it's just um review just five columns where you get uh, there are reviews from customers so we'll be able to extract keywords from them we'll be also we'll also be able to do some um sentiment scoring so that we know the tune of that customer uh, review so data cleaning as usual when you get your data you're going to clean it you're going to also um model it and then on power bi you're going to create some uh, calculated columns depending on the data set you have and by the time you do all that then you're now ready for the analysis all right, let's see what we can do within the limited time we have. I'll, I'll take you to Power BI, show you the visuals, talk about them, also take you through the AI inside visuals, and then we'll talk about them. Okay, so um, has anyone used the Q&A visuals? Okay, it's not really a visual, but it's a feature. Has anyone used the Cree and Ave? Okay, beautiful. What about the key influencers visuals? What about the uh, decomposition tree visuals? Smart narrative? We are not answering. Okay, we all know all of them. Okay, not all. Okay, what about text analytics? Has anyone been able to use? Is um, Azure? It's built on Azure Cognitive Services. So even com uh, the vision, computer vision and machine learning. Okay, let's go into Power BI. Okay. Okay, um, these are the normal charts we know. These are just the normal charts we know. Nothing so much, but let me show you the data set. This is the supermarket or retail data set, it just ship mode, segment, country, city sales, postal code, region, category, subcategory sales, quantity, discount, profit. For the revenue, it was a calculated uh, colon I did. So basically, I just want to, okay, for those that have not used the question and answer, you just need to double tap or double click on an empty space and then it comes up question and answer okay it comes up this is built on a um, natural language it's already asked uh, there are questions here it's showing me top cities by total sales so it has looked through my data set and is able to bring out some things that it may want me to check. When we talk about a uh, copilot, you see Microsoft announcing things like copilot and many, many interesting AI things. And you'll be thinking this one will make me lazy and stuff like that. Just as what we've been talking about with AI replace your job and all that. No, it's your ability. Is in fact, it's all about productivity. Productivity is the word, so that you don't spend like. Um, 10 hours on a walk when basically you can use two hours for it. The other eight hours, you can still use it to brainstorm and still from that eight hours, you can still use it for some of that. You need to rest, Kwanon Abi. You need to sleep. You need to rest. You need to rewind. So why spend 10 hours on something that you can actually spend two hours on? So let's just say You've done some of your analysis from the top of your head. You've done, you've done, and then you feel there, there, there is more to it. So the question and answer can help you. It's already giving me suggestions of some, um, some visuals or some insight I should do. I just need to click one of them, and then maybe just turn. Let me shift this thing. Okay, I'm trying to zoom, but guys, we are fighting. 
Okay, if you just notice this one, I've turned it to a video already. Sometimes these systems can be funny. So, <laughs> it's okay. Okay, then uh, the next thing is, um, okay, that's the question and answer. Then the smart narrative, there's a smart narrative uh, visual. The thing is, when you have any visual, sorry, it's not a visual, it's a, it's a feature. You can just right click, like on this chart, you see this chart. It's true that when you look at them and when you put, when you label your data, you'll be able to get the exact figures. But you can just use your na uh, smart narrative. Just right click and you see summarize. And once you click that, it's going to summarize everything for you in natural language. And it's, it's very accurate. You get to see everything. You can even actually add some values and some other wonderful things you can do. For the want of time, please, when you go back, you can practice all those things. Then the next is the... Okay, the decomposition tree. Look at the way it's 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 look okay. This is key influencer. This is, let me just go to the composition tree. This is it here. This is the visual here. Now this is let me just do it. Okay. Now when it comes, you just have two things. You have the analyze, which is the main thing you want to analyze, and then you have explained by the things you want that anal uh, the analysis to be. So what we are trying to do is you want to dig deep into the things that causes these uh, changes. Now, if you're interested in sales, for instance, let me get my sales here and analyze. So I'm telling you to analyze sales for me. And I want it to be by maybe by category. So I just come here, you're going to see something like a, first, uh, a cross. Let me just add country, explain by country. You see a, a plus here. Then you want, oh, it's by country. Do you want the high value or low value? You can choose anyone. And it's going to give you, the high value here is US. That's why I'm seeing US here. So you can basically add city, category, whatever thing you want it to explain by into this. And then you begin to dig deep into it. And just like that, you, you, be, you understand it. As you look at it, it's very easy to understand. For want of time, let me go to the key influencers. Now, these key influencers, you may want to know the things that influences a particular, uh, will I say, metrics per se. For this one, I still have sales. Now, what are the things that influences sales? Just as the name is key influencer. You will see that I have, when... The subcategory is uh, tables. It's going to increase by 400 and what do I have here? I think 47. Okay. It's saying that when the subcategory is tables, the average sale is going to be 432.75 units higher compared to all other values of subcategory. So now you are able to know the particular uh, things that influences a maybe your, what do they call it? Di um, it just escaped me. You understand? Okay, thank you. So that when you are not going to build a model much later, you, uh, when you are doing your feature um, um, separation, your feature analysis, you know the particular features you pay attention to because they give the overall influence on that particular um, analysis you are doing. Now let's go to the other AI visuals. Okay, I have here the review data set. Now I'm interested in detection of language, key extraction, and score sentiment. For this one, it's been done already. It's been done, that's why you see English. You see your uh, keyword extraction, it has extracted some of them. And you see the sentiment score. So let me just go to the one that has not been done before. Here it is. No, this has been done before. Okay, this hasn't been done. Look at the data here, transform data.
Okay, look at them here. This AI insight, you can go back to, to do them. This AI insight, this is where you have the text analytics. This text analyt analytics, when you're using your Power BI desktop, you are entitled to have three of them, which is the language detection, the key phrase extraction, and the score sentiment. But on Power BI service, you will now have an additional one, making it four, which is the image uh, classification. So you just click on test analytics. What it's going to do is, it's going to create a new column for me. It's going to create a new column. I'm interested in review data, okay? I just have six columns ending at image links. Let me try. It will prompt you to sign in. I hope I'll be able to sign in. Text analytics. Prompt me to sign in. At this time, no, no. I would, I would need to sign in. So basically, you can just try this. The AI insights, you're going to get it when on your Power Query Editor. That is where you see it. It's on the Power um, Query Editor. It's not on your main um, desktop view because it's going to create different tables for you. And when it creates those tables, you have the tables that is the extracted keyword. You have the tables for the sentiment. Then by the time you now perform your close and apply, it becomes a table for you, a column for you rather on that table. After which you can now use them for your analysis. I hope you understand. Sorry for the rush and uh, the want of time. So you can connect with me, you can reach out to me and we can discuss more about this. Thank you for attending. Have a beautiful time.